Hello guys, so welcome to the Crypto OGs episode number three. This is your host Andres Meneses. I'm very excited to be here. I think so somebody's a great team and they have a little bit of echo. Let me just take it out. So I have so many people here right now. Tell me where you're connecting. I have people before from Bangladesh, Thailand, Philippines, Germany, Turkey, South Africa, Nigeria, Colombia, Bulgaria. How are you guys? Thank you so much. This is episode number three of Crypto OGs. And we have a very special guest today. I met uh, this guest a couple of weeks ago in the Binance Blockchain Week in Paris. And as soon as I started to talk to him, I knew I had to bring him to you guys. This guy is not only one of the smartest guys in Web3, he knows a lot about trading. He has mentored so many traders. But on top of that, he has a pure heart. You're in a company that you are a person that struggles hell, yeah? Bring in good energy. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Welcome to Crypto OGs. So let me introduce you to my good friend, Adrian. Crypto Bear, how are you, man? Hi. Hi, I'm good. I'm good. Beautiful weather up here in Dubai, bro. Uh, looking at you, Andres, as always, kind of like makes me smile a lot. <laughs> uh, lots of good words. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, man. Um, yeah, so thank you for being our guest in, in Crypto OG. So we are live in Binance Live and also on Twitter. So I will let me just share with you before I forget the link in Twitter so people can connect. Um, let me just do it very quick for you. So the audience, your audience also can see your life. Da, 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 da. How are the weather in Dubai? Yeah, listen, I mean, I, I think, you know, the situation here in Dubai is overall good, you know, for crypto. Uh, so the weather is good for like the, the very, uh, I say, season and for the crypto, right, overall. So um, by, by, the, by this weather, I mean the very government kind of like being open to cryptocurrency enthusiasts, you know, to, to blockchain developers, to uh, like giving a lot of businesses with, with um uh, providing them with low taxation kind of like formulas right here's basically like a you know good tax haven place you know with zero percent taxes on crypto uh next year i think they're going to inter uh just bring some sort of like a nine percent nine percent corporate income tax uh but it's not going to be applicable to too many many forms anyway so overall you know i'm happy to be here i'm kind of you know you were mute. You were mute. But okay. I like that how you start the show, Adrian. You start to bring in good energy live from du from Dubai. But let me introduce you properly. Uh, for many of you that you know who is Adrian, Adrian is, uh, first of all, an engineer, charter market technician. Um, on top of that, he's been, he has a massive community in Twitter, more than 600 people. He's been in, in, in cryptocurrency from 2017, which is amazing that's why he's an og um but more than that he also did a master degree in chemical technology and project management finance fo focusing in finance he's also a performer a mentor an influencer a great friend Eddie, you are you are a guy with so many hats and so many skills so let's start from the beginning tell us how was how you start in cryptocurrency what year it was and you remember the first crypto that like, what was the first uh, appearance that crypto came to your life? Did you hear through friends or you saw on Facebook or you saw it on the radio? How, how was it? The first time that you came across cryptocurrency? Yeah, yeah, bro. I think it makes sense. I mean, uh, I think when I was finishing my, my kind of like past, past minute ago, I, I think it's going to like my, my go the interrupter or something. But one way, one way or another, uh, you know, my active side of the crypto story started in 2017. Uh, which is when I had uh, basically, you know, more, more time uh, for myself to invest, you know, um, like my energy, my focus, my dedication to something else outside the studies that I was doing at that time. And uh, well, prior to this, you know, I would hear about crypto in 2013, 14. And my grandfather used to use, bit, uh, used to use Bitcoin for football bets, you know. Oh so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy at that time. Uh, at the same time, I... From what I know, you know he's he's never been a good trader. Uh, I remember, you know, from the when I was when I was you know a kid, I remember him sitting, you know, all days glued in in front of his computer screen in those fancy, you know, crazy curves and charts, which is exactly what I am doing right now with this difference. 
with this difference that uh, I, I think I have way more approach, uh, way more, you know, structured approach to the systematic trading. Uh, but, you know, other than this, in 2014, of course, Bitcoin, you know, would have this, you know, anti-Gox collapse. So the hack would come in. Uh, and I remember, you know, basically you know, talking to my friends, uh, like me being, you know, the chemical technology kind of like student at the time. I was uh, having a lot of friends from the IT department, from the IT, from coders, programming, and some people were interested in blockchain. And I was meeting, you know, all those geeks at the parties and, and, and you know, having a good time hanging around, uh, drinking beers, getting, you know, dr drunk, basically, typically what Polish people do out there. And, um, you know, I remember, of course, you know, many people talking about Bitcoin, like, oh, dude, like, did you hear what Bitcoin just crashed? It just crashed so badly, right? And it was fresh after this. Uh, fresh after this, you know, you know, hack collapsed. Uh, so that was the time that I kind of like, you know, heard about Bitcoin and I was starting to hear more and more. But my focus was on the studies. My focus were, was on the on the chemical technology at the time. So I decided, okay, I have to play the priority game first. So I put my first things first, you know, decided to finish off the studies. And then when I finished off the studies, graduated from one university, then only I was able to kind of like invest my time and focus in something else, which crypto was. So, uh, you know, the very first crypto, I guess, was, I think it was called Databits, Databits, something like this. Now, it, it was Digibyte as well, like DGB. I, I don't even know if they are around, uh, like some of them may, may be around still. Uh, but definitely, you know, first time back, first earned money, but also first lost money. So, um uh, Eventually, you know, it was a good time, early 2017, right ahead of these biggest pumps. Uh, good memories back there. <laughs> well, that's amazing, uh, Adrian, that that everything came obviously from the family first. So you basically you understood about crypto from the beginning or the, the news came from, from the family, let's say like that, and then within your colleagues as an engineer. For example, from my side, even though I'm a computer engineer, I was working for as a project manager by my office where I used to work, I was talking about Bitcoin, Dash, Litecoin. Everybody thought it was crazy. Nobody believed. Only one guy, even when they were engineers, only one guy believed in me and he bought a bunch of Dash. By the way, guys, everything that we're saying today, this is no financial advice. Remember, do your own research. Very important. Adrian, but you mentioned something very important also about community building. So you understood about crypto. You start to learn, as you say, educate yourself. But then you said you were hanging around with a, a bunch of people that were enthusiastic about the cryptocurrency space. And I think so this is something that people, many people don't understand at the beginning. So, and this is something that Satoshi Nakamoto did very well at the beginning. You know, I don't know if you have read uh, Digital Gold by Nathaniel Popper, the story, the Anatoly story about Bitcoin. But in the book, he, he explained how Satoshi, he started to build a community just sending emails and in Reddit. And then he get two more people to help him with the project. It was everything about community, you know? So let's talk about community because, yeah, we go to all these different events. We've been doing it for five years, six years, and then we know, like, who to talk to. But when you are in, in an event or a small community, a small gathering, the information gets faster. You get more, like, attached to the industry. But tell us how being your let's say your evolution within your community, how you start from zero to now to have 600,000 followers on Twitter and have one of the biggest trading uh, academies in Europe. Tell us that transition for somebody that's just getting started, that's new in crypto, maybe it's been one, two weeks, a month, and now they want to follow your path. Yeah, yeah, you're too kind and thank you for the kind words. Uh, I do believe, you know, listen, that, you know, this journey is, uh, is full of lots of, you know, uh, ups and turns and there's, it's just like any chart in the world, it never goes, you know, in a straight line up forever. It always has its own, like I said, twists and turns and, and ups and downs, um, you know, peaks and valleys. So here it was no different, to be honest. I had my uh, points, you know, uh, where, you know, where I would be not so much, uh basically kind of like having too too much community on like in the past i was only starting to get um like this recognition i remember in 2017 later in 2017 when the market was doing really good you know towards the end of the year when the bitcoin was basically you know trading from 15 to you know into twenty thousand dollars i remember it was actually this is a good time 
we are talking this is 30th of September and, and like a couple of years ago, this this 2017, uh, at that time, Bitcoin was actually just breaking through the new all-time highs constantly. And it was bringing, you know, like $5,000 milestone, $7,000 milestone, $10,000 milestone, and it kind of like kept elevating, which of course brought many, many people, you know, to the, to the game. And that is, you know, somehow that by being in, Twitter at that time, you know, by posting and sharing, you know, my thoughts, my my charts, of course, they were they were relatively uneducated at that time. Um, I was starting to get this a little bit of attraction. Uh, people, you know, started getting attracted to what I do, to what I share, to what I write, and uh, they started following me. Right. Uh, however, I think the major impulse came in uh, in later, one year later, which was 2018, and the bear market floor. You know. And many people basically found the tweet that I shared in 2018, but it was 11 months earlier. It was in January or February when I was talking about like Bitcoin being priced, evaluated at three, four thousand dollars. That it's possible that we would see, you know, this price, this kind of like prices, which we of course saw eventually. So I guess this, there was a there was a tiny bit of luck in it. Uh, eventually, it's it's hard to guess the bottom or the peak always, but some people you know just did manage to dig this tweet up, you know, find it. Uh, and then the tweet started flying, you know, and then people were starting to realize, okay, this dude, like, maybe this dude is no know, knowing something that we don't. Let's follow him, right? So that's how I got my first ten thousand followers, my first twenty thousand, fifty thousand, and uh, because I followed through, because I actually, you know, kept learning, kept kept educating myself, you know, following also the CMT path, now improving as a technical analyst, as a as a crypto trader. Uh, well, I had this opportunity to grow and I just, you know, took a shot with it and then continued to grow. And that's what I keep doing. Uh, similarly, you know, five years later that, like I said, this is definitely a downturn right now for the bear market, for the recession, you know, the, the I was just posting a tweet, uh, you know, just for a moment in answer to, to one of the guys asking the comments about the, about the engagement. And just to give you a rough estimation of what the engagements, you know, were for me on Twitter, uh, like you, you were very, really, you very well know about the engagement. You're a huge person on, on Instagram and everywhere you go. So congratulations. Uh, the engagements and the views that I was getting, you know, on my Twitter account back in 2021 in November were like 170 million a month or something like this. Right now it's down to like 10 million, 5 million, oh, you know? Wow. So it's like a, it's like a massive, massive deterioration, massive, massive, you know, uh, weakening there. Uh, which reminds me a lot to what was happening in 2018, right? So, but I keep learning, keep improving, uh, and you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully, this is going to be following up higher. Well, Adrian, this is fascinating what you just said. You know, like social media and also the cryptocurrency space, it has up, ups and downs. You know, so you start to build your community from scratch. You were nobody. No many people knew about you then you did that tweet that saying about the price of bitcoin and 11 months become reality obviously because you were studying a lot and you also did a basing and intuition that you were getting started and obviously you learned a lot from different people um but what you say went from 170 million impressions to 10 million impressions on twitter from 2018 to today is crazy so um one thing that I, I'm very, very happy what Binance is doing over the work in Binance Live. And we met through a Binance event. And you're also one of the biggest key opinion leaders for Binance. They are doing a lot of for social media, you know. So for everybody that's in, in Binance Live, just watching the streams, just looking at other content creators. Uh, this is good for somebody that just want, get, just want to get a start in social media and crypto. I think so. We're very privileged that CC and all the team from the social media part and Binance Life have bring this together because, yeah, the algorithm, as you say, on Instagram, on Twitter, and, and other platforms is, is not as easy. So people, but it's never too late, right? It's never too late to start in social media and in trading. Let's talk now about trading because trading is a topic that people think obviously is getting rich quick you know people see the the lavish lifestyle people buying lamborghinis people living in private jets going to monaco to saint tropez to all of this crazy life but they they think that trading is only that it's lifestyle but it's there is some there's a component behind trading that people don't show but you show it because you show your analysis your trends you show how 
how many hours do you apply in the computer? Tell us that path as a trader. Like, when do you start to see results after like one year, two years? And when do you feel confident also to start to teach others? Tell us that path of, for a trader, for somebody that's just getting started. Yeah. Uh, I think I would get started, you know, with saying that my educational kind of like aspect to it had started way before I got into crypto because before crypto started, I was, you know, I had been basically working as a private tutor, a private teacher uh, for chemistry, for maths, for physics, you know, for all the sciences uh, to, to many kind of like, you know, people out there, like helping them pass the exams and then making it, making their ways uh, nicely for school and so on and so forth. And uh, in all honesty, I would always appreciate, you know, this opportunity to convey certain message to the people so that, you know, typically when I was having most of my, stu mo most of my, you know, teachers at school, you know, they were not really good quality, right? As in those basically were the people to, who would just come to work and they would be like, oh yeah, let's just uh, knock this stuff off and let's just fucking go home, right? Or something like this. And uh, like, it is, it is very scarce to see very good quality teachers. So I decided that, you know, taking the best I could, you know, from those teachers who I really loved and admired, you know, I was able to, you know, convey certain message and not only learn uh, as in get, get to people that certain knowledge, uh, certain like plain information, um, but also certain message on top of it, right? Uh, about the persistence, about following through, about, you know, just continuing to, 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 to you know, chase their dreams and so on. Uh, long story short, and this kind of like, I think, paved the way, you know, to me to becoming and opening the, the educational platform, the Burpness, right, that we've got since 2017. So it's, this is where the things accelerated for me as a teacher, because I was able to get the platform, this audience and this community, that instead of having this kind of like a private one-on-one -on -one chats with, you know, with limited reach to the, you know, to certain people, students, I was able to actually take it to yet another level, to the next level, and basically use it the entire community that I had, right? So the impact that I was starting to get was, you know, 100 times bigger, like 1,000 times bigger, 5,000 times bigger than I what I had, you know, on the private kind of like season, sessions. So uh, all those things concerned, you know, um, this, I think, applies well to anything. And I mean, to trading, to learning maths, to, you know, being a good tennis player, Whatever that is, right? If you keep improving, if you keep learning, keep kind of like, you know, getting, uh, it's not just a one foot on the platform, right? But it's but it's like all in, kind of like the knowledge, the mindset, and you keep learning, keep trying to soak in, you know, the, the, the information. Then naturally what comes as a result is, is this is this um, this potential that you build, right? So you build a lot of knowledge within, you have a lot of knowledge, and then it's up to you whether you want to, again, Push it some, push it somewhere else to the people. Convey the message, push it better, or kind of like utilize this within your own circle. And this well applies, like I said, to anything. But for me, the main focus started coming within technical analysis. That's where I started, you know, shaping my skills. Of course, the technical analysis, you know, charts and the and the the, the ideas concept that I used in 2017 are were very different. You know, they were very uneducated. They were very um, primitive, if you will, they were very simple, you know, I, I definitely had, you know, much less understanding about, you know, how the things work in finance. So uh, right now, I can tell that, you know, just a little bit more, maybe I know about the finance, but because it's such a dynamic matter, it's such a dynamic field, where real time data, you know, just flows in and manipulates the prices each and every single second. Uh, then it's impossible to catch this rabbit, but it can always try to, you know, chase him, right? And uh, that's how I kind of like got, you know, down the rabbit hole here, uh, being a technical analyst, being a crypto trader. For me, it's always starting from the kind of like theoretical background, right? So many people would first kind of like, you know, try to rush and then, you know, get their feet wet basically. And then, and, and you know, just get hurt, get harmed, you know, to their portfolio and lose, lose all their money. And they would still learning uh, after this. This is the most this is the most frequent pattern and there is nothing wrong with it i mean this is this is typical kind of like situation typical scenario what happens uh however if one's job if one's dream is to become the trader they have to realize that it's not just enough to again invest and know 
oh, I'm just going to invest and lay back, you know, I'm just going to watch on the sidelines and not the, how my money pile just grows, right? Um, becoming fucking rich like overnight. So instead, it doesn't work like that, of course. Instead, what we have to do is we have to, you know, provide the work and keep learning. Uh, and I mean, you know, for my side, this learning of trading comes from the theoretical background, which is technical trading, technical analysis. And there are many ways of trading, right? Some people are fundamental investors when they would try to, you know, count it and discount it, cash flows or like, you know, price to book, um, you know, values or, or they would come and measure price to sales and different kind of like, you know, financial statements of companies uh, trying to, to, to figure out which are underappreciated, which are undervalued, which are overvalued for potential good investments. There are people who would invest based on the sentiment, like sentiment traders or contrarians. There are people who would trade based on intermarket correlations, right? Who would basically see, oh, the dollar is pumping, so I'm now going to sell, sell short each and every single risk asset that I have. Myself, I'm being, a, I'm, I'm a technical trader. Technical means that I'm trying to look and understand what's happening between two parties trading. So let's say there is a trader one and trader two or trader A and trader B. And my job as a technical analyst is try to step and look at inside, look close to them, what's happening and the connection between them, right? So while the fundamental analysis helps you helps you look and understand what's happening outside of the market. So what is happening, you know, outside of the Bitcoin, if you will, uh, at the same time, for the technical analysts, what's important to what's happening inside of the Bitcoin market, right? So this is what the technical analysis means. And me being able to use and apply certain technical analysis tools, you know, just like trend lines, certain chart patterns, you know, trends, moving averages, uh, this helps understand and portray certain picture that potentially may be more likely to come than not. However, it doesn't give you a guarantee that it's going to happen, right? So we never know that, you know, what the future holds. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow at all, right? Perhaps, I'm, you know, perhaps I'll be dead. I don't know. So we cannot, we cannot ever, you know, guarantee for what's going to happen in a day from now or in a week from now, not even to mention in a year from now, right? When there is so much of the unpredictability, so much of the, you know, tensions going on in the geopolitical scene where this butterfly effect, you know, it happened and the butterfly flaps its wings, you know, the swings somewhere on the other side of the planet and it's going to cause a hurricane, you know, somewhere. So, uh, you know, I, I guess that just being able to invest my own time and resources that I had, the money that I earned into the educational kind of like materials, into books, I had read really, really many, many books, you know, on technical trading and technical analysis. This definitely helped me gain a little bit of knowledge and just a little bit of understanding how the markets work enough to make it a profitable journey for me. That's so exciting, Adrian. And I have Sir Budan from Bangladesh. He's saying that he loves your beer, by the way. Just I just reading the notes in, in Binance Life. People love your beer. They're telling that knowledge is power. Uh, he said they're saying that they love uh, Binance Burj Khalifa <laughs> was amazing. They're saying that they like the way that they made you made him feel. Um, crypto is so sunny behind just to let you know what, what the community is doing. We have 2,000 people watching right now on Binance Live, so which is very exciting, you know, to be part of this family. So, you talk about mentality, mentality is very important, you know, um, especially for for trading, um, but let's talk about resilience and persistence because I think so that's something that most of the leaders and OGs in crypto have in common. Like we're very crazy. Everybody that's in crypto, we're a bit crazy to jump in a new technology that not many people understand. We have to learn in the process ourselves, but teach at the same time. But I probably, I probably assume that you have many, so many failures in the past. You know, you probably lost money, won money, Obviously, and there probably was a moment in your life that you said, you know what, this this might not work. Well, like you probably didn't have self-belief in yourself. That happened to all of us. So let's talk about mindset and persistence. So when was the moment that you said, you know, this is too hard? I remember I was talking to one of our good friends in common. He is a trader as well at KOL. He been trading from 2013, 14, and it took him like four years to make money. And then he made like eighty thousand uh, dollars, and then he lost everything. And then he's had to start again. So two questions here: What has been like your biggest loss? Can be in terms of quantity, or can be in terms of like it really 
got you down for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. Um, how you rebounce of that? So for people that just getting started in trading as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a very good, you know, real question. Um, I wish there was one simple answer to it. I don't have a prepared number for how much I lost. It was probably like all together if I were, you know, because I'm not a day trader. I don't put all my money in you know, just one trade so that I can say that, oh, I've just lost half of my portfolio mm -hmm. with this one trade, right? So I have many, many different, you know, uh, types of assets. I have real estate. I have, you know, invest in gold, silver, and, and even jewelry, super jewelry. And I was holding my portfolio up, you know, for the entire 2022 so far. And crypto outside of cash and other kind of like, you know, durable goods, you know, this is just one part, um, you know, it's just one type of the market, right? Uh, and like I said, you know, I don't have any prepared number. I do believe, I do believe that I typically like lost, you know, somewhere close to six, seven figures. I don't know how much specifically. I remember trades where I lost like $300,000. I remember trades when I won, you know, $1 million. I remember trades where I would have uh, missed, missed basically on, on specific huge rallies that I was all about to get invested, you know, heavily, but I didn't. And then it flight and then it didn't mark the flight, you know, for like 500 X or something. So, and, the, and those, I'm, I'm mentioning those unrealized, you know, opportunities because they are valid costs. They are opportunity costs, right? These are the money that it could have earned, but you didn't. So they technically count as loss. So if accounting all the losses that I got, I imagine this would be somewhere between like, you know, probably three, five million. I don't know. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, but this is, you know, this is, like I said, it's never, it's never for me, you know, in this one single trade that I have it, right? So that I could say, oh, that this with this in Bitcoin USDT trade on 50x futures, you know, I basically shorted and I was wrong and I lost 56, you know, percent of my portfolio or something. So it is always kind of like many, many different, you know, bits and pieces here and there that I'm collecting that give me earnings and that give me losses. And there is never uh, for such a, you know, complexity in portfolio when it's never all in one asset because there is complexity in portfolio, which is good, and distributes the risk. And uh, the finance, you know, in finance, what matters is, uh, is not only the profit, but is also the risk side to it, the volatility. And... In fact, you know, in the financial terms, many people, instead of like returns on portfolio, you know, or returns on equity or returns on position, whatever, they would use, they would use risk adjusted returns. And by that, I mean like a sharp ratio or some other short set tender ratio, which basically tells, takes uh, an earning minus some sort of like, you know, like a risk free rate, like a treasury bond or something, uh, divided by the volatility. So there is this, there is this, uh, this relationship that, your portfolio can have good returns, but if it has good returns and the volatility is high of it, which typically happens, then it's still not going to be high or efficient portfolio. It's not going to be good because what matters, you know, what happens if you have good portfolio as in, you know, good earnings and it just goes, you know, shows up uh, like aggressively, but the volatility is like that and it chops you around basically, you know, and, and causing too much risk and too much stress and of course making many people just lose their faith and and you know and close positions there in the end hold on to their losses and many of them different kind of like you know mental traps like that so um you know with this portfolio distribution you know between many different risk assets uh and risk types of assets i've got positions which are more risk um you know averse as in cash you know cash is right now of course losing a, a lot right now in polish in poland in poland this is just as hot news kind of like early morning uh came up that you know the inflation year over year for september 2022 yeah. is basically 17.2 percent which is insane uh so by holding you know over a year we're losing 70 percent this is this is this is like exceptionally ridiculous uh and in theory cash is riskless in theory, cash shouldn't have any risk, right? But of course, this inflation risk is, is, is high. But still, even if the positions are, even if the markets are losing, you know, even if the positions, you know, are losing, then I would still have portfolio built in a way so that it has differently correlated assets. As in one asset, you know, you, you often to balance out your portfolio, to cut a little bit of the profits, but to decrease your volatility and risk to the portfolio, you try to mix different uh, assets which move in different directions. As in, when Bitcoin moves up, you know, you perhaps just maybe want to have, I don't know, cash, right? Which is going to balance it out or gold, for instance. 
right? So that whenever one goes up, the other one goes the other one goes down. And the result of the profit is smaller, but at the same time, the volatility of the portfolio, the risk of the portfolio is smaller. So despite I am losing, let's say, you know, because this is a bear market and, and, and recession, I'm losing on certain positions, then I am losing much less than if, that I would have lost if I had stayed only in Bitcoin, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin is like 60% down, but because I had distributed, you know, Bitcoin profits, you know, in quarter, in last quarter, last year, uh, you know, outside of crypto, I didn't lose as much as I would have if I stayed only in Bitcoin, right? So, so there's always this kind of like never straight line up. It, it never happens that all the portfolio goes up, you know, forever, that it, all the positions go up at the same time or that all the positions go down at the same time. But that comes with the portfolio diversification and that's the healthy approach. Like they say, this that all this are all phrase they say. Don't put your eggs in in one basket. No, just diversify your portfolio. And by the way, guys, remember this. This is uh, only opinion from us. It's no financial advice. Do your own research. Very important, Adrian. So you lost seven figures, but loss. But obviously, you learn from the experience. You learn from it. But something that you've been, and I've been looking at you, and I've been following your twitters and. Something that you take very serious in the technical part. You know, these are long games. So people sometimes get emotional and they, if they lose, they don't think they can go back on track, you know. But you take this very serious from a technical analysis point of view. And also, you you know, the more that you know, the more you try, the more structure you have, it will bounce back, correct? Um, let's talk about your students because th there are many people... I'm one of them, one of those people that want to learn from you, Adrian. Um, let's talk about your student because I think so, success leaves clues, right? So you've been five years, six years in crypto. You have achieved massive success. You you become wealthy. You're probably, and in one point of your life, you want to help other people. And that's what you're doing through your, uh, with crypto birth, you know, but also probably you, we talk at the end about how else are you helping people uh, from the philanthropic point of view. But let's talk about your students. Can you tell us when they join your program or your me mentorship, what they can expect? And tell us what has been one of two or three cases of studies of your students that become financial free, but also they, they repeat your success. Yeah. Yeah, so there is, uh, there is like this whole... Um, on our Discord, which is one of the communicators that we use, you know, for, for the community, mm -hmm. uh, we have this entire section of, of the success stories. And probably if I started scrolling right now, we would not manage to finish until the end of the show. I can show you just a glimpse of this. But there are tons of plenty of people, you know, who would definitely just have massive success with it. There would be people who will also have massive failures, right? Typically, those would be the people who would, you know, ignore uh, all the risks and they would just counter trade every single word, you know, that was short or, you know, educated as a healthy approach to trading. But I cannot fight it. I cannot force anybody to do one way or another. You know, we're not a fund. We don't have a hedge fund or any sort of like a proprietary fund management license. So I'm not a portfolio management for people. I'm not collecting people's money, right? So mm -hmm. I can only say what I imagine from the educational standpoint, from the technical standpoint, from the art, art standpoint. Is, uh, is supposed to be a good good move but i will never know you know whether those people are eventually going to apply that and like many many stories come from the people who are who show this persistence right okay. so despite there were many failures uh they had you know their losses that like five trades lost in a row like 10 trades lost in a row and this is the more losses you see the easier it is to give up basically right because then you see you're starting seeing this kind of like a trend this tendency oh that i'm a terrible shitty trader i just keep losing right and we have this tendency of what we call is philosophy you know this crime of small numbers so that we would extrapolate from small data right mm -hmm. another term for it is representativeness bias where people would have just tiny tiny bit of a small data right so let's say instead of 100 trades, they would take like five trades and they would say, oh, I lost these five trades, so I must be a terrible trader, so I better give up. Well, for instance, these five trades might be, you know, might be nothing compared with the wins that I would have if they had stayed for the 100 trades, right? So building this uh, these large numbers, uh, you know, is uh, 
is what defines eventually the success. And it's not about losing one time or winning one time, right? It's not about this windfall profit that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I won this bet, you know, and, and the money all of a sudden appeared on my account because I was right. I, I didn't even need it. I, I, was, I entered the trade accidentally, but it earned me money, right? So it doesn't make anybody a good trader. It doesn't make anybody a bad trader either. So you can only tell, and you should approach it as a, as a trader, as a technical trader, this very top level of trading always comes down to systematic trading, as in you build your own system, right? And a good technical system consists of the market entries, what kind of like markets you trend, the market exits, uh, what stop losses you have, your risk management, you know, position sizing, uh, and on top of that, the technique that you use, as in if it's an Ichimoku or if it's, you know, moving averages or if it's some other, you know, Bollinger Bands or something. So building, you know, this system eventually leads to certain, to what I think is the most important point in trading, which is this very persistence, right? Building the system gives this uh, non-discretionary mode to it, as in discretionary traders would have, would each and every single time they would weigh in on their emotions and they would say, oh, this pattern looks good, but uh, maybe I'm not going to enter it, right? Or or this pattern looks shitty, but ah, uh, shit, let's give it a go, right? Let's try. And this this discretion each and every single time, this this opinion of one person is more likely than not going to be used uh, to be used wrongly because it's impacted by by emotions. And by definition, emotions are spontaneous reactions within our body and mind. We cannot control them. So whenever we rely on our money, you know and attach it to something that we cannot control, then risk factor to it is com complete bollocks, right? It, it doesn't work, Like right? There is no risk management to it. So as long as we cannot predict the future, because we cannot predict the future, right? We, we don't know, we don't know what is going to be, you know, happy, you know, happening tomorrow. Uh, we can only manage our risks as in the money that we want to invest, the amount of money that we have in a position, depending on, um, on what we see in the chart, right? So if you see, if we see, let's say, Bitcoin pattern, Bitcoin chart pattern has, I don't know, 65% uh, of, of likelihood of, of the past, you know, 11 years that it broke upwards, then downwards, then you may weigh in and decide, okay, now this pattern is, is happening again. And it had, historically, it has 65% of the chances, you know, uh, over larger sample of data. So just maybe there is something to it. So I know that if there is high chance of winning, that I may be, I may put just a little bit more of my money into a potentially better, so a better position, right? Another way around, if I know that a pattern or you know at a specific day, just for instance, Bitcoin hates September. September is the only losing year on average mm -hmm. for Bitcoin. The only losing yeah. year out of all 12, uh, 12 months. Um, so we have 12, 12 hour left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, exactly, right. The only the only losing month in the entire year is September. So I know that, for example, for example, in September, I don't want to be spending too much money because I know that historically it's been very poor performing mm -hmm. month. And by you know doing this a little bit of adjustments on the risk side, deciding how much money I want to invest where it's safer and how much money I want to not invest when it's you know dangerous, just like September. Only then you can really push push your, uh, your your trade, your portfolio upwards, you know, have some better better income. And eventually about 30% of the time, so three out of 10 times, you're going to have those larger tails in the market developing those trends, right? 70% of the time, the market just chops around, like just like what Bitcoin does. It just chops around, you know, $25,000, $17,000, just goes back around, you know, doesn't make sense, no persistence, no follow through. Uh, however, for the 20, 30% of the time, the trends develop and those trends tend to persist. So when it finally breaks, it continues to move in this direction, right? But it only happens 20% of the time with 30% of the time. Wow. So if you kind of like, again, do not overinvest when the market is choppy and wait, you know, with small losses uh, and wait for a larger trend to develop, then you may actually start winning and letting this larger trend, you know, level up of all the portfolio. So that's exactly the style of doing of my training, which is what I call, uh, which is what is called trend following. Trend following. Guys, I, I hope you are paying attention and taking notes of everything that Adrian is saying, because you are learning from one of the best crypto traders in the world. And if you don't took notes, don't, never mind, you can 
rewatch this video, share it with your friends and family. We're also live in Twitter, guys. So you also can follow Adrian in crypto underscore verb, yeah? That, that's your Twitter handle. Adrian, I follow you a lot on Twitter. I remember two things that you say today is about, basically, you cannot guarantee the future. You cannot see what's going to happen in the future. One of our good friends, uh, Evan Luther, he said the best way to predict the future is writing it right now. Uh, but other thing that you mentioned recently, you were on holidays, uh, I can't remember, in a beautiful place. But you said this has been one of the most chill bear market that you have lived. You're feeling more relaxed in this mar market than the previous one. Let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about your life because we understand and we can perceive you're a great teacher. You're a very good trader. And I have met you in no trader. <laughs> I met you, you know, we met in Paris and we were just chilling. And then when you put the hat of trader and teacher, it's, to it's totally different, which I respect and I love as well. But let's talk about Adrian, the friend, the good son. Tell us about how your life have changed for the last five years, what you used to do before, how you are helping your, your family and friends. Um, you become also very good in real estate. You mentioned that you bought a couple of properties in the Emirates. Tell us about how much crypto have changed your life. And it, it only took five years. You think that five years is long time? But... It's, it's no long time um, if you want to put it that way. But tell us how crypto changed your life from 2017 to today. Oh, man, this is this is a very, very good question. I think it's changed, you know, my life like significantly. And it definitely, you know, is an opportunity, just like any opportunity. It can work as this sort of like a trampoline, right? When you step on it, it can bounce you. And it, but it but at first you have to step on it right so uh, having this opportunity and using it are, are completely different things. I kind of like you know consider myself perhaps a little bit lucky, maybe guided. You know, I believe in God, I believe in in Jesus. I'm, I'm very very religious. That's what I try to do at least. So I feel like I'm guided. I have you know definitely surrounded myself with beautiful people. I have a loving, beautiful family. You know, beautiful wife who supports me twenty four seven. So it's amazing. Uh, so I'm definitely lucky and, and gifted within those terms to give me this hope whenever things are, are bad and, when, and you know, to kind of like perhaps even slow me down a little bit uh, on purpose when I'm, you know, when it's, things are rolling too good, because when things are rolling good, you tend to get overconfident, right? And this typically, this typically is not good uh, for, for the decisions you make. So uh I think that crypto came in as this huge opportunity and it brought me, you know, many, many friends. I think it made me open uh, eyes to many different other factors and I was having you know many discussions about that and I have this feeling that you know money money can change you know people a lot right uh, and money is this this kind of like a amplifier is like this you know megaphone if you if you have good intentions it can make you you know sound better you can make make this good good intentions you know just you know propagate more and better and faster but if you had bad intentions then those money can turn you into even a worse person right so i know i know people who would use money for terrible things i know i know people who would use money for for great and amazing things right what i try to do you know uh for my for my own case is i try to be this the second part right i try to be the better guy uh, where money is just giving me this opportunity to grow, to become a better person, right? And this this just happens, you know, to be a lot of blessing to me that I can talk to many brilliant people, meet people like yourself, Andres, you know, and uh, this is this is something that I feel really blessed, you know, for and about. And crypto is just a part of this game, which kind of like accelerated and set of stuff for me, right? I'm still 28, about to ter turn 29 in like five, six days, something like this. When, so is it, when uh, is it so we can send you tweets? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go. It's, it's 5th it's, of October. 5th of, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's 5th of October. Uh, so it's it's literally like five five days or so. But, you know, all, all of that comes down, like I said, you know, to, to having this opportunity and to using it, right? And I feel that with me trying to persist to become better, again, you know, perhaps getting deeper into this religious stuff, uh, trying to understand the world from the religious perspective, you know, I meet many different people whom I can give hope, whom I can give a little bit of light when the world is becoming, you know, a uh, darker place, basically. So that is what I hope money is giving, um, is, is giving, you know, here. 
I, you know, I helped my my parents fix major major debts. I, you know, I helped fund, you know, my to my family, you know, uh, their. I don't want to go too much into the details, of course, but like you know, putting putting the money for the universities and so on. Um, this this definitely helps, you know, helps me help and bring aid to a lot of charities. So I, you know, have this lovely, beautiful pirate oasis sanctuary in Arizona, in the United States. And I myself, you know, as a crypto burp, and the burp nest is all about the birds in the nest. So, uh, you know, I love parrots. I own three cockatiels, like the small, medium-sized parrots. And I very much, you know, passionate about helping, you know, the shelters, the parrot animal shelters. And there are tons of, you know, the parrots are, are very often, you know, trafficked, you know, from, from, you know, Australia to other countries, but they are, you know, very harmed in that, right? When, they, when you try to kind of like make money illegal, you know, of selling parrots, you know, on this black market, if you will, uh, you know, and selling them in small, you know, bottles, cans, and they are all squeezed, you know, and then kind of like, you know, just from small birds, they, they grow and they are feel trapped. They just don't feel good. Uh, physically and mentally then, you know, help putting them, having this sort of like a shelter down there in Arizona is something that, you know, can straighten a little bit and bring a little bit of cheer. That's amazing. Lives. Yeah. So I, I, I work with them, you know, on a regular basis. I help them, you know, send, you know, six, five, five, six, no, not, not six figures, but somewhere like five figures uh, already and counting and each and every single bigger event I do I actually commit and send a share of profits to to them as a as as a generous you know kind of like and as, as a point of having this generous opportunity to help them um, and of course i have i have people you know whom i helped you know uh, on behalf of my company on behalf of my own you know help their you know in poland run their surgeries you know save their uh, legs from amputations and there were many many of those cases all is there up the city on twitter uh, but it's just the beginning right i definitely want to use it more and better and Adrian, God or whoever you you believe in, the universe always give back to the to the good children. And you know, the, let's talk about this is a little bit of topic about trading, about crypto. But very quick, and uh, before we wrap up the, the the streaming today, you know, you need to come to Colombia because in Colombia we have one thousand nine hundred forty one species of birds. That one of the biggest, like we have so many. Actually, I have some anti. They have uh, guacamayas, parrots. Mm. They have a bunch. They is beautiful. I, I will take you, and you will see. Wow, this is. I'm so. I'm so. Let's go. <laughs> you need to go to Colombia. You will love it. But Let's also go. that you are helping your family, and the people close by to you, and also people that need uh, this in need in Twitter. But something that you say today, I just go go my goosebumps because. I done three episodes until today. El Jabun in the first episode, you know, you know El Jabun, he's a great guy. He talked about intentions. He talked about intentions that the very first when he was building his community. And then on Wednesday, I have Maggie Sue. She was the ex CEO of Jazz Wallet. And she also talked about intentions. And you mentioned the, the, the word intention as well for money. Like it's how how the intention with money so people can be good or bad. So I think so intention is very important for everyone. And I have a surprise for you. It's, 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 it's early for your birthday, but talking about intentions, we're helping a lot of people here in Binance Live with mystery boxes and all of that. Um, and by the way, we, to wrap it up, we will talk at the end about how you connect with Binance and why the people need to start to follow Binance and what is good to trade in Binance and what is good to be in Binance Live. But before that, crypto OGs, we're going to meet a hundred NFTs in Binance Life, and we're going to give it to our guests. So it's based on the on the favorite animal. So yesterday Maggie said what the fox. So why are your favorite animal? So we start to create this NFT for you and mint it. Yeah, this is obviously going to be a parrot. We can call a it parrot. African Grey. African okay. Grey, yeah. And by the way, when we get to a hundred episodes and we have the hundred holders that the hundred crypto OGs. I will do an event with the whole team of crypto OGs and we give the money, we will relaunch the NFTs and we'll give it to one good cause. So that this just came out three days ago with the creative director of crypto OGs. He gave me the idea, said, let's do it. Now, Amazing. just to, to wrap up, um, number one advice, what will you tell somebody? Everybody's asking here on the chat, like, 
what portfolio would you buy? What what crypto would you hold, etc.? So you can reply to somebody with 30 seconds advice. And then why do you choose to trade in Binance? You choose that you trade a lot uh, in Binance and you obviously you encourage the community to trade in Binance. Those two questions just to, to wrap it up. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, one question, I guess, gets the answer that each and every single person is going to have a different answer depending on the risk preferences. Some people would really, would, would you know, go and lock, losing all their money in the casino and the other people would do anything but trade, right? So I'm somewhere in the middle. And typically, you know, uh, when you want to go and search for the risk-seeking, you know, adventures, you try to go and search for the biggest outliers, so the biggest pumpers, and also the biggest dumpers. So you get money a lot in the bull market, but you lose a lot in the bear market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I would simply, you know, call for a, for the obvious solution, right? So because I strongly believe that it's impossible to get addressed, you know, each and every single person in the world independently, individually, everybody needs to have their own setup and portfolio. You know, I guess that having, uh, having you know, somebody said basically that it's good to hold to hold in your portfolio in your account at least one percent of Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is typically what I'd also you know would say and 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 recommend as long as this is what they what you know matches their beliefs or whatever uh, trading career just gets them. And second question is. Uh, getting the answer, you know, is getting the answer uh, in terms of the Binance. You know, I I'd used Binance since 2017. I remember, you know, me growing as Binance was growing at that time, and um, I use it because I'm, I'm endowed to it. I've been using this for five years, so it's quite some time already, almost. And uh, and they keep improving. You know, I met CZ. Um, you know, I met CZ in in, in Paris. I met CZ in, in in Dubai. We had pretty amazing, you know, chats. Uh, with with the beer and just really open on a stock with a couple of guys uh, with CZ, and I know that he seems to be a very good guy, you know, for sticking with it, right? Because I know that you know operating such huge firm just like Binance is you know, is not an easy task. However, he's modest, he's very you know constructive. He knows how to persist, how to demand, how to expand, and this is what I do. this is what I definitely would expect from a good exchange. So they are meeting my expectations, you know, and I keep using this. Amazing. Adrian, it has been an honor to have you on the program. I hope to make it to Dubai by the 5th of October. So, you know, guys, if you, if you haven't followed Adrian, go and follow him in all his social media platform. It's CryptoBurb. I will leave it here in the chat as well uh, on before we close the, the stream. But Adrian, thank you so much for, the, for being in the show in Crypto OGs. Um, we wish you the best, success, wealth, health, and carry on what you're doing. Uh, I'm really proud to have you around my life. And I'm very sure that everybody that's going to watch this program in all the streaming platforms, they will start to follow you because you are made of pure intentions. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you in the next Crypto Use episode. We're coming back on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.